It's pretty hard to get lost when you have a roadmap. The problem is people stepping into the no-code space are usually building and launching an app for the very first time. That means not only is it hard to figure out the order of which steps they should be taking, it's hard to figure out which steps are even right to take in the first place. In other words, there's no roadmap in place. And unfortunately, this leads to really long development timeframes, expenses that are just way higher than they should be, and launches that are constantly delayed. And look, if you are building and launching an app, but you don't know how to code, it's not your development expertise you're bringing into this. It's your industry experience and your ability to help people solve a problem with an idea you have. But without a roadmap to guide you, your experience, no matter how significant it is, is not going to get you very far when it comes to actually launching a product. So today I'm going to give you a roadmap I want you to steal from this video so you can launch your app successfully even if you don't know how to code and even if you've never built and launched an app before. So you need to go through four overarching stages to build and launch your app. And within each of those stages is its own set of steps. We're gonna go through all of those. Okay, so jumping over to the iPad here, we are gonna go through the four stages in this diagram, stage one, two, three, and four. We're starting right over here by going through a high level scoping exercise by following something called the Moscow Matrix. Moscow is an acronym that stands for must have, should have, could have, and won't have for now. And it's essentially just a way to help you separate all the features that you've come up with for your app into different development versions with each version having its own goal, which we'll talk about. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is list out every single feature that you've envisioned your app having. And from there, we're gonna break all of those features up into four different development phases. The must have features, the should have features, the could have features, and the won't have features, at least for right now. When you start development, you're gonna focus on the must have features first. And this is the set of features that solves the very core problem that your app is aimed to solve. And your goal with this set of features is product validation. In other words, will this core set of features solve the problem as intended? Now that's version one or your pilot app. Once you get that product validation, you're gonna move on to the should have features. Now your should have features are ones that still solve the core problem, but the goal with these is for you to validate adoption for the app. So are, con are users able to consistently use the app in real life situations to solve the intended problem? The difference between these two testing phases in terms of features isn't really all that significant, but with the must have features where you're looking for product validation, this is generally going to be a pilot testing group where it is a closed testing group within a certain time bound period where you are not quite hands off with those users. Whereas with the should have features, the next version, those users are really taking the app and running with it a little bit more, using it on their own in real life situations to see, are they able to adopt it? Real quick, if you're finding any of this useful, then definitely stick around because we still have a lot to cover but I want you to bookmark another video. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. And this is actually a free extended workshop. So this video is gonna help you put together your overarching idea to launch roadmap. This extended workshop is a more kind of pin to paper or hands to keyboard approach when you're actually ready to start doing all of this and building your app. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. It's completely free to join in on this. So bookmark that and head there next. All right, from there, you're gonna move into those could have features. And this is where you are solving that core problem better. And really you are just looking for product enhancement. So you've gotten that product validation, you have confirmed that users are adopting the app. Now you're just making it better. You're making it more convenient to use, easier to use, maybe even more enjoyable to use. And then finally, you're gonna to get to those won't have features. And this is where you are now 
adding on to the app, maybe you are solving more relevant problems or maybe for more people. So we're just gonna put a plus sign here. And this is where you are generally just expanding the app. Think of these as features that won't really be useful or relevant until the app is under a certain load or there's a certain volume of users on the app, maybe like groups or communities, that type of feature or review features where unless there are a certain number of people using the app, they're just not going to be useful. All right, so once you have gone through your entire feature list and you've divvied up all the features into those different development phases, you are gonna have your full scope roadmap. Try not to make this perfect or feel like it's set in stone. In fact, you should expect it to change as you go based on the feedback you get. We really just want a starting point that breaks up the features based on priority and specific goals. All right, so that takes us to stage number two, which is your pilot app development. And this is where you're gonna take those must have features you've segmented out and actually create the first version of your app. The development of your app is going to have its own four stages. You are going to start with your app's database. From there, you'll move on to the architecture, which is really just the pages, the screens, the general flow and navigation of your app. After that, you will focus on user creation. And from there, you're going to look at the custom features that really make up your app. To better understand why we do it this way, I'm going to break this up into two sections. So we have the database and app architecture at the bottom, and then we have the user creation and custom features at the top. In order to build the screens, the pages, and the flows that users are going to interact with, it's helpful to already have the database in place because that's going to inform what you actually need to build in terms of those pages, the screens, and the flows. And in order to build the custom features of your app, you need to already be able to create users so that as you build, you can effectively test those features as a user. Let's zoom in here though, because there's also a specific way that you want to build these custom features. Your users are going to be following a user's journey throughout your app, which means they're going to be following a specific set of steps to solve whatever problem it is that your app is helping them solve. So let's say you have five must have features included in that pilot version. Well, you need to build them in the order that correlates with the journey your users will be following throughout your app. So what feature does an, a user interact with first when they come onto your app? Well, build that feature first. What do they interact with next? build that feature next and continue that way throughout your development. The reason we do this is because it allows you to layer features onto your app, which means you can test effectively as you go. So if you sign up to your app as a user during testing, you can actually navigate through and use that first feature, which will allow you to test it. But if you were to jump around, you're not going to be able to test entire flows within your app as you go. And then once you are on the other side of development, you are probably going to have a really big mess on your hands in terms of testing. It's going to be really hard to effectively launch that way. So this entire visual that we've gone through for right now, it's going to help you create your version one roadmap for your app. But once you get into development, it's actually going to, of course, help you create that pilot app itself correctly. All right, so stages one and two down, that is going to take us to stage number three, which is internal testing. This is pretty straightforward in theory. It's where you are preparing the app for external users to come on board. However, it's a little bit more complicated in practice than it sounds. Okay, so I have a visual here that bear with me is representative of a user navigating your app and interacting with the different screens and flows and processes of your app. So we've talked about a user's journey and that is descriptive of the start to finish of your app as a whole. But within that user journey, we have what are called user stories. And these are descriptions of every single step that a user will take throughout that overarching journey. 
Now, every step will have some sort of action at the start and some sort of outcome at the end. Now, in working with our own clients, these user stories come together in one of the earlier stages that we've already talked about. Of course, everything in this video, practically speaking, goes a lot more in depth. So we're just kind of covering the main points. But the reason why I bring up the user stories in this phase is because they are gonna provide the framework for you to effectively test your app. Going back to our representation of the user journey and the user stories, if you were to write out every single user story for your app as a whole, this here on the screen is just a tiny sliver of what that full user story list would actually look like. And the thing to understand about testing your app is if you were to make a tweak over here, for example, well, you might experience a ripple effect over here without initially realizing it. And so testing your app is a very tedious process, though, of course, very worthwhile and important to get right. So by leveraging these user stories as your testing framework, you can go through and test each individual story of your app following that overarching user journey. And then you can go back and test everything all the way through to make sure that no ripple effects have gone missed. So what that is going to leave us with is your pre pilot check. And from there, we'll go into the final stage prior to launching, which is external testing. Now there are two stages of external testing. The first is the alpha testing stage. And this is when an external user or users other than yourself comes onto the app and tests for function only with a focus specifically on bug and issue testing. So envision basically the exact same testing you did, but someone else doing it. After that, we have user testing, which is when a test group from your target market comes on board the app and they specifically test for value and usefulness. And you want to go through the alpha testing prior to the user testing, because what you really want to avoid is for your actual test users to constantly run into bugs and issues. You want these all cleaned up so that when those test users come on board, you can actually get feedback on the value of the app versus any hiccups. So when looking at that fourth external testing phase that we're in, I'm specifically focusing on alpha testing because right now we're still pre launch. The beauty of alpha testing is that when you are going through as a developer and testing all of these different user stories and the overall users journey, you know, every single click action and step that should be taken because you have built it. But when you bring on someone who has not built the app, they are going to use it differently than you. Now, instead of having these alpha testers kind of mass click or brute force test the app, a good way to think about doing this is to set goals for those alpha testers. So let's say you are building a job board app. Well, maybe you want to set a goal for your alpha test users to create a company profile and post a job to create an applicant profile and to apply for a job. Breaking it into goals like this allows you to not only test for that functionality and make sure the bugs and issues are as cleaned up as possible, but it also makes sure that your app is intuitive and usable. And once you've completed that process, your pilot app is now user ready. And from there, you can bring those pilot users on board, get that product validation and continue expanding from there based on feedback. So remember, it's hard to get lost when you have a roadmap and that could not be more true as a no code app developer, especially if this is your first time building and launching an app. So please take everything from this video, steal it and use it as you build and launch your own app. And look, if you found this helpful, but you already know you would rather have step by step hand holding help to go from idea to pilot launch, then head over to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash apply to book a call with us 
and we'll see if it's a fit to help you. Here's the link on the screen where you can do that and I'll also drop it in the description box below. Thank you.